Hello and welcome to Thriving Together, and that's what we're doing today here in Beverly under the auspices of uh, the, the Agency on Aging, or Council on Aging, I guess it's called actually. Yes. Um, and my name is Susan Crowley, and my colleague and friend is here with me today. Uh, we'll tell you a little bit more about ourselves later. Um, our topic today, though, is saging and aging. And uh, saging is a little challenging to think about, I'd say, because yeah. it's not my grandma's favorite meatloaf recipe, you right. know, when we talk about sage. We're going to mm -hmm. talk about saging as it relates to uh, thinking about our lives, our older, mm -hmm. you know, as we get older, and uh, uh, recognizing perhaps our challenges and our worries about aging, but then looking at what things might bring us value and meaning in our later, later years. And so, mm -hmm. you know, with that, we'll, uh, we'll get going. I'll introduce myself again and say that my name is Susan Crowley and uh, I have 73 years of life experience. Bev, would you like to, you know, let's clarify sure. what saging is to help the audience sure. initially. It's, it's a little sure. hard. First, I'll just introduce myself. I'm Beverly Flanagan and I have 70 years of life experience. In case you're wondering why we're opening that way, that is part of how people who have in a saging group have learned to introduce themselves. It's part of the saging uh, process. Because it's a way of saying that's valuable. Yes. You know, as opposed to being somewhat chagrined or anxious about giving your age. It's saying you you have lived this many years yes. and you have yes. experience to show it. And that is part of what yes. saging is about. Yes. Cultivating the wisdom of those years. Absolutely. Uh, to be honest, I had never heard of saging or conscious aging or anything like that. And I worked with seniors for many years. Uh, but when I was turning 60, no other birthday had bothered me <laughs> prior to that, but that one bothered me. I felt a lot of angst because it was suddenly clear to me there was more behind than ahead. Should I retire? When should I retire? All those other things. Um, and it, it just so happened that I came upon an interesting book called From Aging to Saging by, we like to call him Reb Zalman. He's got a longer name than that. We'll get mm -hmm. that name to viewers at uh -huh. the end. Um, came upon it in the, my library. Uh -huh. It was serendipity. and. He was a rabbi who, when he turned 60, experienced similar angst. So he shared his story and his personal process for working through that angst. He had kind of developed a program mm -hmm. that could work for many people. And that is the process we've come to call saging. Mm -hmm. And that's in the 90s. And, you mm -hmm. know, I like to think about, you know, that this. Uh, those years. I mean, we had so much, um, what I want to say, empowerment going on, mm -hmm. you know, in the, the latter half of, mm -hmm. a, of 1960 on, from civil rights to the women's movement. And then in the early 90s, aging came into its own. And part of why I think it came into its own is because there was the first really research that showed that, you know, you can age well. There is such a thing as successful aging, and, and we're not, uh, dementia doesn't happen to everybody. You know? It's not and a so normal let's, part of aging. It's no. not a normal part of aging. And so mm -hmm. what we ha wanted to think about, and I think what Zalman started us on is, mm -hmm. well, what do we do with the last years of our life? Yeah, what do we have them for? Yeah, yeah. I mean, studies have shown, and we just know from looking around, people are living longer. Our healthcare system is such that it's enabled us uh -huh. to stay in pretty decent shape. And mm -hmm. w along with the uh, empowerment, we're baby boomers. Yeah, We've yeah. been a force uh -huh. our entire life. And now that baby boomers are themselves becoming uh 
elders or seniors. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We're still a force. Yeah, you know, I mean, and the thing is that uh, it's not just that, I mean, we are, there are physical changes. We're not going to, there's nothing to deny about that. But then the question is, if we're not working anymore and, you know, we're slowing down all of us in different ways, probably. Have you know, some what, aches and pains. Yeah, how, how do we, um, how do we spend those years and what, what would be meaningful? What mm -hmm. do we, you know, how can we feel a sense of, of satisfaction, accomplishment even, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, and Zalman, and I, I call him Zalman, that's his last name, Reb Zalman, uh, and I, uh, you know, I came up with a, he talks about the box of unlived life. Which is a strange concept, <laughs> you've never heard of it. Yeah, no, it is, it is a concept. Yeah. And his point of that was that, you know, if, some of us, if, if uh, we agers have uh, difficulty looking back over our lives, because let's face it, we've all failed, we've all made mistakes, we've all done mm -hmm. things that we're embarrassed about. You know, if we, if we can't look back over that, and if we have anxieties and fears about growing older and we don't want to look forward, well, we're kind of in this you know, kind of stuck in a way in this box where mm. we have so much more to offer. Yes. You know, that uh, we need to come to terms with, you know, maybe the past and the future. Yes. You know, and that by yes. doing that, we can uh, feel more confident in mm -hmm. where we're at in our lives. And, uh, have bring more acceptance of ourselves. Yeah, have more acceptance and mm -hmm. bring forward more authenticity and a deeper sense of who we are. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, another term for that saging term is really wise elderhood. Yes. You know, that uh, we, uh, we have wisdom, you know, yes. and we, we need to not be afraid to look for it. I mean, let's face it, you get a lot of wisdom from the mistakes you made. Yes, it's not just true. your successes. No, that's very and, true. Uh, and when, when you look back after it's been a while from those experiences, you can often look back with a little bit clearer head and say, what did I learn mm -hmm. from that one, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then when you can sit and talk with people who have worries about uh, becoming debilitated or dependent and realize, we all have those concerns, yes. and that it helps to uh, to talk about that, yes. and yep. to, and to talk about dying. You know that mm -hmm. it's uh, it, it kind of frees up energy. Yes, to live now. Yeah, to, to live, live now. now and to live more fully. Yeah, and what you're touching upon are some of what he called the core concepts of saging, and. I might not remember all of them, but uh, they're including images of aging. Yeah, because he, he starts out, or we start, we start out when we, when we do a workshop yes. talking about um, aging, what is it called, aging? Consciousness. Well, there's um, aging consciousness, but uh, the denigration of people who are older. Yes. You which, know, by society, because and we're no we might longer be doing it to ourselves. Yeah. Too, yeah. Because we're no longer in the workforce, and you know, right. just right. a drain on the economy or whatever, right. whatever right. you want to say. But. And let's see. Some of the others are expanding elder consciousness. What do we believe in the ultimate sense? It's not about religion per yeah. se but we all have beliefs. What are they? Uh -huh. Some people maybe never thought of what they believed. It wasn't much part of their life, but uh -huh. now they have time to consider what they think, what they believe. Clarify values. Yes, yes. And then we have life review. And again, that's related to that box of unlived life uh -huh. in that you look at the different stages of your life what you experienced, what was important, who was important to you. Uh, that can be a difficult exercise. Uh -huh. You may have had very sad times or very hard times uh -huh. or embarrassing times. Yeah. But 
most of us that have gone through that have found that invaluable yeah. in getting some yeah. perspective on ourselves, who we really Where are. Where we've been. Who we really are. How we became who we are. And another one of his concepts that kind of goes with all the concepts is something he called harvesting our wisdom. So that after you do any of these exercises, he suggested you kind of pull out what was the wisdom from that. It's not mm -hmm. just an exercise. You can find the pearls of wisdom for yourself and to share them with others. Mm -hmm. Invaluable. Yeah, and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't really remain stagnant because yeah. I've kind of gone back and looked at mine a couple of different times, maybe a year mm -hmm. or two apart, and then something else kind of kind of comes forward. But I, I feel like it's given me more a sense of myself. Yes, yes. And then related to that is life repair because that life repair may be as simple, not simple to do, but as simple as a new perspective yeah, on the past. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe there are relationships. We mm -hmm. do a lot of work around forgiveness. That's uh -huh. a tough one. Uh -huh. It could be forgiveness of others. It could be forgiving ourselves. Uh -huh. That one uh -huh. is a tough one. Yeah, and it seems like it, uh, when you look back over your life, you, you kind of get a little bit more comfortable with the reality that we're all humans and we're just struggling along trying to do this as best we can, right. you know, and right. it, it makes it a little bit easier to go a little easier on your friends and your people realizing, well, you know, that's... We're all human. We're all human. None, none of us, us are perfect. perfect. <laughs> that's, a, that's a life lesson in itself, yeah. isn't it, Susan? Yeah, it is. So we work on life repair and forgiveness. Uh -huh. Uh, another core concept, and it, this is another toughie or can be, is facing our mortality. Mm -hmm. Death is considered one of our biggest fears as humans. Uh -huh. Right up there with public speaking, I hear, but yeah. definitely <laughs> something to... Uh, but we do know there's more behind than there is ahead, uh -huh. and every single uh -huh. one of us uh -huh. is going to face that uh -huh. at some point. Well, and it's also getting clear, we talked about that... Um, what is it that we believe, you know, about what happens after you die and what actually is the fear? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and I've read some things about, you know, some of the fear is often more about being forgotten, you know, yeah, like than... Yeah, didn't count or yeah, something. Yeah, and so kind of sharing and sorting out a little bit what those things are mm -hmm. and then being mm -hmm. able to take a clear look at, well, what would I want... Um, you know, if I was in my last days, or how would I want to go out? Right. You know, and right. um, that's, that's that can be practical matters, like making sure you got a will, and how you're going to sort out your possessions, uh -huh. your how you're going to share your values with uh -huh. those that come after you. Yeah, yeah. Maybe children, maybe colleagues, maybe neighbors. It could, yeah. doesn't mean you have to have children. Yeah. But you might want to leave something of value. Yeah, yeah. And that's another topic, which is uh -huh. leaving a legacy uh -huh. related to that. And indeed, it might be something as simple as my feet get cold and I want socks. Yes. <laughs> or, yes. you know, you want to be able to look out a window to the green trees. Yes. Or you want certain music or, you know, those, mm -hmm. those kinds of things that actually I find it, um, it's somewhat comforting to think about that, to be able to get to that place, and that took a while, but to be able to get to that place. Um, Again, that has to do with autonomy. Yeah. We yeah. want to be able to make our own decisions about ourselves as long as we can. Yeah, yeah. And there may come a time where we can't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Either we're incapacitated due to illness, or it could be any number uh -huh. of reasons. Uh -huh. To share those and wishes with others is important. Yeah, and spending time actually thinking about your last days or dying really brings home the importance and the value and the gratefulness of having today, you know, yes. and to make, you know, yes. to, to make more of the time that you do have. Yes. Because it's clear that there will be an end. Yes. 
And mm -hmm. all that relates to one of the earlier things, or gives it more meaning, that expanding elder consciousness. Uh -huh. That we know we live in the now. Yeah. We live today. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and the more we can bring of ourselves to that today, you know, and the more we can, well, and legacy, you know, we legacy. already mentioned legacy, you know, mm -hmm. how do you want to think about that and what's important? And I'd like to talk about, and we should tell them, you know, at some point, the training that we went through and that oh, whole thing. Yes. Uh, but I like to talk about living your legacy and leaving your legacy. So living mm -hmm. your legacy is like what you do every day, how people feel when they're with you. Right. And leaving your legacy comes that, well, are there stories that are really important for you to pass yes. on? I will say my, my son recently asked me for recipes. And yes. so I got this you know, idea that I'm going to make this recipe book and perhaps put some other things in it. And uh, you know, that would be, it'd be a legacy. It'd be an heirloom. Yes, it would. And, and so that's cool. Probably quite treasured by your family mm -hmm. behind you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to yet another core concept, which is that of service as elders, mm -hmm. and be all of the above that we've talked about. Uh -huh. And we're not working necessarily at a job. We may or may not be, I don't know, but uh -huh. it's not about the job, uh -huh. but how we can be of service. Yeah, and what is it that you want to give back? And that's where that uh, issue of gleaning wisdom from mm -hmm. looking at your past, gaining understanding uh, and thoughtfulness about how the future, uh, we don't know how it's going to unfold, but to recognize that that uncertainty is present and being able to live with that. Oh, absolutely. You know, that, um, yeah, it, 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 it really, brings a more authentic self to knowing yeah. what, what can we do? What do we have? What is our little piece of sand to put <laughs> on the, put yes. on the beach? Yes. <laughs> yes. And it could be when you did work at a job, Maybe you liked it, maybe you didn't, whatever. That was a means of making a living uh -huh. and paying bills. But were there things that you wanted to do you never got around to? Maybe now's the time. Did you always want to learn to quilt, do <laughs> ceramics? Maybe it's time to do that now. Uh -huh. Did you always have a heart for environmental activism? Uh -huh. So much needed now. Now you can, yeah. you have the time. You have some wisdom, some perspective. Mm -hmm some knowledge as to how groups can work together. Uh -huh. Maybe you have something to volunteer there. Yeah. What is it that really is meaningful for you that you know, brings that yeah. energy, makes your heart flutter? You know? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, so, so to exactly. speak. Exactly. You know? you know, and I'll say that, um, you know, I got into aging uh, back in the 90s, and uh, this is a, a story, not for this time, but you know, I, I have a background as, in nursing, you know, uh, and saging is psychosocial, spiritual. Mm -hmm. that, that, those are the concepts that are involved in it. And so I, I had a specialty of psychiatric nursing. Mm -hmm. And so I was always interested in how people grow and develop and how, you know, right. how, why people do what they do and yes. think the way they think and act. And mm -hmm. so really curious about that. But, you know, I had, I cut myself and my nursing students kicked out of a nursing home back in the early 90s. And that kind of got me interested in aging. Mm -hmm. I had a favorite grandmother and uh, I started, you know, reading. And I think I ran into Zalman's book then and, you know, did uh, some postgraduate coursework in gerontological nursing, mm. you know, and taught courses for older adults where I was where I was teaching and just you know older yeah. people are yeah. so interesting because of the experiences yes you know and I used to give my students uh, CNA students an assignment to interview an older adult you know and I said and do not let them get away with saying oh I didn't do anything I have you know mm -hmm. because everybody's got a story and it's fascinating and it is so validating Yes. To have someone, you know, listen. listen. Yeah, listening is huge. Yeah. Active listening. Yeah. 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 Myself, I worked in human services and I, in health care too, but I was attracted to elders. You speak of nursing home, 
I worked in a small community hospital and would be literally aghast at the condition that many elders uh -huh. came in, whether from home having taken a fall uh -huh. or especially from nursing homes. Yeah, it's difficult. And that led me to Maggie Kuhn of the Grey Panthers. Oh! and being an advocate, because that's mm -hmm. kind of the way I mm -hmm. went, rather than nursing, uh -huh. like you did. Uh -huh. but, um, but yeah, and then, you know, I think at different times, we both were involved with groups. Uh, we did a kind of course, if you will, called From Aging to Saging. Uh -huh. That spiked me to want to go more. And uh, mm -hmm. Saging International, will give you that information at the end as well, does offer a year-long internship for those that really want to dig deep into mm -hmm. these core concepts mm -hmm. and learn to share them with groups on webinars, uh, which you did one year, I did uh -huh, a, uh -huh. a different year. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. at the end, we became certified uh -huh. Saging leaders. And it was a great system. way to spend the COVID years. <laughs> oh, wasn't it both? You were in the group that I was first, the first had to learn how to Zoom. To Zoom, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I was in the next uh -huh. cohort that kind uh -huh. of figured it out by then, uh -huh. but we still were learning. Uh huh. But yes, that was a great course. Yeah. Well, when I, uh, uh, I spent the year before I retired uh, reading everything I could about aging, yes. conscious aging, you know, and, and found that Saging International website and that program. And once I found that, I was like, oh. So for me. That's it. That's, yep. that's what I want to do. I want to develop a, more of a deeper sense of my own spirituality and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, understand more about, about aging so I'm not so afraid. <laughs> well, there's the fear. But you threw, you threw out the term again, conscious aging, which had totally new to me. Yeah. And at least in my perspective, I think that means aging with intention. Not just every day happens and you're just getting older and here comes another birthday and uh -huh. now you're a year older. Uh -huh. But again, like we started in this conversation, how to live these years now mm -hmm. with meaning and with purpose. Uh -huh. That's the conscious of uh -huh. conscious and, aging. And joy and gratitude. And uh, things that so, are positive. Yeah, so as um, certified saging leaders, then we teach a workshop uh, called Awakening the Sage Within. Yes. You know, and it's an eight, eight hour uh, workshop and it comes in a variety of different forms. And we go through each of those core concepts yes. from, uh, you know, the, you know, the aging. And I still can't remember that word that I'm looking for. Um, you know, the view of negative aging, you know, yeah. to a more positive sense of aging. And, you know, there's been research that has come out only in the last few years that if you have a more positive perspective on your own aging, that it is correlated with living longer. I've heard that. I've read that, too. <laughs> um, Maybe because you're living better. Uh huh. Uh huh. You put some more uh, uh -huh. positivity in your uh -huh. life. Uh huh. So, yeah. so we, we deal with conscious aging and perspectives on aging, and then we go into the life review uh, and looking back and mm -hmm. bringing forward and harvesting the wisdom, you know, uh, that we may have gotten there. Mm -hmm. And of course, these groups are, you know, you, you share to the degree that you're comfortable. You're not, yes. You're, there's, and you nobody's know, required to it's share. It's not therapy, you know, it, no. and, uh, but it's a, it's a, it's, there's a camaraderie that kind of develops and it's just reassuring because other people feel the same way you do. Yeah, about so there's, many things. So yeah. there's life review and then it's... Um, life repair and forgiveness. Forgiveness. And then it's... Uh, Facing our mortality. Mortality, legacy, and, and service. service. I mean, the core concepts... We can rework them different ways, uh -huh. and different particular subjects uh -huh. can uh -huh. fit in uh -huh. any of those. Uh -huh. And really. we could probably talk for a half hour, you know, on, on any one of those. On each core. one of those. <laughs> so I don't know about you, but, you know, would you be interested in coming back and maybe uh, sure. doing a little bit more sure. exploration of, 
yeah, I would. these topics. I, you know, I think that would be yeah. fun. You know, I... Um, We've barely touched the surface. We've barely given touched a the surface. very introduction uh -huh. uh, to saging. Uh -huh. um, for me, at this point, it's almost kind of become a way of life, a yeah. way of thinking, a mm -hmm. mindset. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I look for, I look for statements that older people make that I say, oh, that's a saging statement because it's a pearl yes. of wisdom yes. that they've shared, yes. you know, with a family member, yes. you know, that I'm like, that's it. Yes. That's what it is. And it's not like, and we've all got them, and it's not like you have to just go through the program to get it, you know, right. but to be able to say, oh, you know, and that because I catch myself after a visit with a family member and say, oh, you know, that was an opportunity. <laughs> I could have, you know, said, In, inserted done this, something of value you know, there, and I, I didn't instead get to of, it. Yeah, 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 I could have I could have done something interesting. Yeah. I'd be interested to know, Susan. Like uh, with your family, with your your son and everything, do you think they've noticed the work you've put in on this? I'm pretty sure that mine have, because they ask me deeper questions yeah. than they ever used to. Uh -huh. I think that's because they know I will uh -huh. sit back and consider whether I can answer them. They don't <laughs> always think I can answer them, but they're wondering about things now, uh -huh. which I think is great because my kids are all like in their 40s, uh -huh. and uh -huh. 40s is not too early to start thinking about some of these core concepts. Uh -huh. Well, one thing I, I hope is that I'm a better listener. Yes. You know, but, you know, being a psychiatric nurse for all those years, they got a lot of my pithy comments <laughs> all along the well, way. Well, that could be. My, <laughs> mine might not have, and now they think I have some. <laughs> but be that as it may, I'm just curious, really. Uh -huh. I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Well, I, I might have to ask. And see. Yeah, right? I'm just yeah, observing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, this has good. been a pleasure. Yeah. This has totally been a pleasure talking with you and talking about saging, a topic uh -huh. that we're both uh -huh. rather passionate about. Yeah, yeah. So if we have opportunity to talk more and tackle a concept or two together uh, uh -huh. on BevCam, uh -huh. I would be delighted to. Yeah, well currently I'm teaching that Awakening the Sage Within course um, over at the Explorers Lifelong Learning Institute in Salem. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've done that several times. It's been really well received. Wonderful. You know, and I'm hoping you know next year I'll be able to, <laughs> I'll be able to do something with the senior center in Beverly. So that's, we'll we'll work on those projects. One thing at a time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. At any rate, well, thank you so much, and thank you for having me. It <laughs> okay. has been such fun. Right. Thank you. We'll do it again. Bye now.